I don't know how to do this. <laughs> there you go. I'll put that in. <laughs> see if I can do the one-handed. Okay, I see. I used to do that when I worked at Hardee's back in right? the day. Right, you gotta be able to... But they don't have Hardee's here anymore. Right, somebody bought them out. Now it's Carl's Jr. Now you you're go. full of egg. Yeah, salmonella. There's even a paper towel for you. Thank you. So then what happened? With what? With the group? You and... Oh, with me. I don't know where I was in so my So you're story. starting, you're, you're in Iowa, you started a group. Oh. Um, online support, and then... You're still married, and you're yeah. realizing this isn't a phase. Right. But I still tried to hang on to the marriage for a while, um, unsuccessfully, because I couldn't, I couldn't stay away from, <laughs> from relationships. Mm -hmm. um, and then those were all crazy, because I would try to have a relationship, but stay true to the church, you know. And, right. Um, I would say, well, we, we have this boundary and this boundary, and, mm -hmm. and I'd either cross them or lose the relationship. And right. How did you meet the women? Unfortunately, I don't know if I want to say. <laughs> I support <laughs> group. Oh, oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and this that happens. It really became in yeah, it except I was North the leader. Star. I was still. You're and also that, human. That became an issue with many people that sure. I was the leader of this group and. Sure. And my intention was always to help them. It really mm -hmm. was. And, and the intention of the group wasn't necessarily to make everybody be perfect. It was yeah. a community. Right. And a sense of support in living your lives and what the stuff that comes up. Yes. So, and, but so I, I you're still. Not to be perfect, but I still wanted to be, though. Sure, of course. <laughs> of course it was. Yeah. I wanted to be that grand example. And of acknowledging the feelings, but living within your marriage covenants and mm -hmm. church. Right. Church commandments. Yes. Yeah, that's a lot of pressure. It is, and uh, people would put me on a pedestal sometimes, mm -hmm. and then I'd fall, and mm -hmm. that's a pretty hard fall. I'm very intentionally destroying the pedestal as I see it being built up around, yeah, around good myself. Yeah, I just like, oh, guess what? But I'm not. I'm not well, that cliche of perfection. I'm not that cliche. And you'll probably be on one anyway, and eventually. I'll no, fall I will off. destroy it. No, I'll destroy it myself. Oh, okay, good. Especially for you. when the actual film comes out, and people go, oh my gosh, I thought he was all. Uh, all that beautiful little um, helpless lamb who's perfect. <laughs> and, like, you were falling off the pedestal. Yes, regularly, unfortunately, and uh -huh. um, uh, yeah, I, I had many experiences with with women from the group um, mm. because I would I wasn't in a place to be able to be the best example, even though I wanted to be. Right. I tried. But you were also working through your own. Life. Right. I was working through my own issues. Yeah. And, you know, on some level I still am, I guess, but I oh, guess sure. we are till we die, yeah, right? Exactly. Um, there, you helped me eat brownies. You, I feel good about it. You uh, made an egg. I mean, you... Uh, cracked an egg. Cracked an egg. I can't make eggs yet. No. <laughs> you can't either anymore, so we're good. <laughs> um, Mazel <tov>. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh... What else? I, I bet Parker's not heard most of the story. Yeah, you want to hear all this? I've been listening to all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> want to actually get in the shot? I guess he's learning new things as he listens. I mean, he knew. You're in the shot right now. Just he so knew. Nice. He he's known for a long time that I have SSA, but. Mm -hmm. I don't so it's interesting that you refer to it that way. What's what's your thinking of? Well, have SSA. It sounds like a disease. Right, because when he found out, oh, old were you? Seven? At the time, really? at the time it was SSA. Nine, uh -huh. um, oh, okay. So that's, I always called it that mm -hmm. uh, for a long time. I called it SSA or same sex attraction. Mm -hmm. And then when um, Elder Oaks came out with SGA, right. I tried that on for a minute, but I didn't like that at all. Because mm -hmm. um, I thought, man, we're whitewashing it even more. Right. And then um, I just really came to the idea that. SSA was kind of whitewashing it mm -hmm. with the introduction of SGA and right. I thought that's really whitewashing then what is SSA mm -hmm. um, and so I stopped saying SSA probably three years ago or so because oh, okay. I'm gay or lesbian mm -hmm. um, even if I don't act on it that's what I am right. but I found uh, when I would talk to members of the church I would quickly add but I don't act on it right. <laughs> <laughs> so as if that makes it better but Right. It does for right. them. It makes for it easier to swallow. Yeah, yeah. 
Now I don't add that. That would be fib. But um, mm -hmm. anyway, so that's why I said SSA because mm -hmm. when he was seven, eight, nine, ten, however old he was when he found out, then mm -hmm. it was called SSA at the time. Right. But he's known for most of his life that I'm gay, and mm -hmm. I've tried to not act on it for most of his life. And what do you think of it all? I don't know. <laughs> Just who I am to him. Right. Yeah, I was going to say, do, have you, do you really have a sense of, like, a change in, in, in knowing your mom from, like, oh, she was, uh, she was straight and then lesbian? Or is, you've always just sort of had a feeling like, oh, my mom's lesbian? Yes, that would have been difference. Yeah. Because he was pretty young, unfortunately, when I divorced, so. Mm -hmm. Very young, too young. It uh, mm -hmm. uh, hurts my heart when I think how young my kids were when yeah. I divorced. But I really can't think of of any other outcome that right. would have right. really would have been beneficial for everyone, exactly. particularly my ex-husband. Mm -hmm. I think it really benefited his life tremendously for and us to you? divorce. Well, it didn't at first. Um, it was still really hard because I was trying, still trying hard to not violate the law of chastity and mm -hmm. live according to the gospel and I would have roommates and um, who I was having relationships with but trying to do it within boundaries and that became very frustrating and difficult and um, just uh, troublesome mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. <laughs> for a relationship to start out that way so um, but then after I just started just feeling okay with who I was you know and accept that this is where I am and I'm not really gonna be with a man again and I don't want to be with a man again and I just I'm gonna live my quiet little lonely life and mm -hmm. keep living that way and then I got my current roommate um, who's been my roommate for eight years mm -hmm. and um, she's been a great example I keep trying to get her to be in this video because she's never acted on her feelings I don't know other I than ask, yeah. other than kissing mm -hmm. me but mm -hmm. um, that's the biggest mm -hmm. scope for her. Right, wow. And um, what I would love for her to be able to tell, um, and this has been so frustrating for me, when Evergreen came out recently with that um, uh, workbook thing, or a book full of mm. uh, talks that people had given. Oh, f uh, FAR did it. Yeah, Foundation for Attraction Research. Did it? That one. Is that they, well, it was the one that, we, if you went to a conference. Yes. You yeah, would get yeah. this book. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And Understanding same gender attraction right. is the name of the book. And in it, that it's they described it mm -hmm. as being for people who believe that same gender attraction could be overcome if you mm -hmm. desired it mm -hmm. and worked hard enough. Right. And it just really made me angry because my roommate is um, how old is she? Thirty-eight. And she's been through years of therapy, and she's young. Uh, she's in a high calling, <laughs> and. Um, she works she, with the youth. Yeah, yeah, she works with the youth. The bishop knows about mm -hmm. her feelings, but that she doesn't act on it, never has. That's cool that she has that calling with the bishop knowing. Yeah, we have a, a tremendous bishop. We yeah. have a great bishop. Mm -hmm. um, but um, anyway, she even tried to date a really nice guy because mm -hmm. um, she, when she first went out with him, she didn't hate it. And she thought, mm -hmm. oh, maybe there's hope. Mm -hmm. She actually enjoyed being with him. Mm -hmm. Um, they had a great time together, but after about three weeks, it started to wear off. Mm. And she's like, I don't even think about him. When mm. he says I want to come over, I kind of dread it. Mm. Um, and this is somebody who's desired it yeah. more than anything, yeah, yeah. worked her entire life, mm. years of therapy, mm. um, and says her prayers morning and night, fulfills her calling, goes to the temple regularly, mm -hmm. and they're not going away. Yeah. Those feelings are not changing. Right. And places like Evergreen or that book or that statement implies she either didn't desire it or didn't right. work hard enough. Right. Mm -hmm. And that is just not true. Right. Doesn't um, have that faith in Jesus. Yeah. Well, I don't know anybody else <clears throat> who has more faith than her mm -hmm. or has worked harder than her. Yeah. Or lives a more righteous than life than she does. Mm -hmm. So um, I would love for her to be able to tell her story, but she thinks it's pretty boring because she's never acted on it. <laughs> um, no. I no, know. no. Just the opposite. I mean, you know, the helping people get a view into like the intense work that that is to maintain that life yeah people have no idea they're like oh well we all have our crosses to bear so she's not special it's like no you have no idea no idea i mean not i'm not diminishing yours or mine or it's well, exactly. else's experience but yeah to be in that sorry, sorry. noisy <laughs> Shh. you can be in the movie but if you want to if we hear you we have to see you 
That's a, that's a difficult thing for him yeah. to be quiet, but he can. He can do it. Um, yeah, I, I'll, I'll talk to her again, but I think her story would be really good to share because mm -hmm. a lot of people think that um, even um, my friend's brothers have said, you just need to try harder, just have faith. It's just right. like any other trial. Right, just like when any other trial. Yeah. It's not just like any other trial. Right. And I was even telling the bishop the last time he met with me that it's it's like we're being held to a different standard mm -hmm. and I'm not that special that I can be held to a higher standard mm -hmm. than any other single person in my ward. So yeah, how, so help somebody who no, no, has no idea what you just said, <clears throat> how would you explain this different standard and what, and therefore why is it harder? But a lot of people are like, what do you mean different standard? We all have the same law of chastity, <coughs> right. we're all just members of the church, commandments, what? Well, for me, um, as a if I were a straight person, the law of chastity would be the the same, of course, that I don't have sexual relations with someone unless I'm legally and lawfully wed. Mm -hmm. But um, as a single straight sister, I can go to the singles ward, I can go to singles activities, I can go to dances. All these things created for the interaction of me and mm -hmm. a potential spouse. Mm -hmm. um, I can go out on dates with a man. Um, I can hold his hand. I can hug him. I can kiss him. I can sit in sacrament meeting and have my arm around him. Mm -hmm. um, you can celebrate your fellow sisters at church would celebrate your exactly. relationship and crush and talk about it. And, yeah, and I can and say, oh my you. gosh, I had the best date. Yeah, and they'll be like, tell me about him. Yay. And, and it's in a celebratory to tone. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, I mean, even in Relief Society, we used to have this Good News Minute, oh, yeah. and um, sometimes it would be, oh. So and so just got this boyfriend, and mm -hmm. or was engaged. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that that doesn't happen. So the the higher standard would be that we don't uh, intermingle with women that we might be interested in. Um, in fact, it's discouraged to have those feelings. Exactly. If I'm gonna have a feeling for a woman, then I need to do something about that. I need to distinguish it somehow. Mm -hmm. And definitely separate yourself from right. that person. The source of those good feelings. Right. Separate yourself from it. Yep. Yeah. And if I have a crush on them, then I need to really work hard to repent of that and try to get get my mind on a different mm -hmm. plane. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to be seen walking into the store holding a woman's hand or have my arm around her, mm -hmm. um, generally speaking, and and be accepted. Right. And I'm not going to be able to say I had this great date with a girl last night, and mm -hmm. people would be like stepping backwards. Right. So the the expectation for me is and other gay people is that we're not going to not only not date, mm -hmm. but we're not going to encourage those feelings within ourselves. And to me they feel natural. Mm -hmm. Just as natural as a straight person's feelings. Mm -hmm. And those are pretty hard to distinguish. Mm -hmm. And I mean natural to extinguish is almost even the banal term like <coughs> when they are in a sense given you know they're allowed to be actualized and brought to fruition that's actually life feels like yeah. affirming it's not just a neutral thing it's like right. no this is like life affirming it's it's what your you know the measure yeah. of your creation is calling you towards yeah. these relationships and yeah. interactions so what and do you do with that what do i do with that well that's not a rhetorical <laughs> question but well, previously what I did with that was um, try to avoid the relationship, try to have it with boundaries, and, and like I say, it became problematic and they all ended. Um, mm. And I, now, when I, when I did make a different choice at the end of 2010, mm -hmm. um, I decided that I was tired, I couldn't do this anymore, and it in part had to do with my mom dying. Mm. And I just thought, you know, I, I can't handle anything right now. Mm -hmm. So I thought, you know, I could just take a break for a minute. Mm -hmm. and um, mean sort of take a break from the restrictions um, of the church. Yeah, and, just trying so hard. Yeah. Because well, ultimately... The other way, I would say, is also seek some emotional refuge, you know, in right. the arms of somebody who you can Well, and I had that. I have really great friends who were very helpful mm -hmm. and supportive and comforting, mm -hmm. but I still longed for something else, right. something more at that Actual time. Right. Yeah. And, um, 
and and it, with mom's death, I guess I realized how hard it was to mm -hmm. live that life. Mm -hmm. How tiring it was to actually every day wake up and say, I'm going to do it right today. I'm going to not act on my feelings. I'm not even going to flirt. Um, and even sometimes I'd have to question myself. Am I feeling this? Am I feeling really gay today because I flirted with that girl this morning? You know, yeah, it's... And which becomes exhausting. Yes. It so it was, it was very tiring. So then that's when I decided, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just take a break for a minute. Mm -hmm. And um, when I met someone almost right away, the experience was very different than before because I wasn't having the boundaries. Mm -hmm. I wasn't saying, okay, it can only be this much. And um, I was actually experiencing, almost like I was experiencing dating for the first time, mm -hmm. you know, like a high schooler or something. And there was no, there was no guilt, I'm guessing. Right, none. Right, you would let go of that. Which was very weird. <coughs> I'm sure. I fully expected mm -hmm. guilt. Um, but the whole experience was life-giving, like you were saying. Mm -hmm. It brought me joy and happiness and um, it was like, wow, this is what people feel. Wow. This is how energizing falling in love really is. And how, can I ask how old you were? I'm 45. You were. So this then I was 44. 44. <laughs> so, okay. Yeah. 43. So at 44, you're feeling yeah. something that's a lot of sort of heterosexual adolescence even. Right. Experience. And I, I had felt it before. Of course, I'd been in love before, but I berated myself for it before. Right, right. And I thought that that was bad. I wasn't right. supposed to be feeling that. It's, mm -hmm. you know, I have to change something. Mm -hmm. Can't be falling in love with that. That's a woman, you know. Right. Mm. So, um, so when I finally just let myself feel it and experiencing it, uh, I really thought I would feel guilty and terrible, yeah. and I didn't. But I felt enough that I went to the bishop right away mm -hmm. and gave him my temple recommend and mm. let him know what was going on, and yeah. um, he let me continue to be a visiting teacher and. Mm -hmm. um, uh, keep my garments and things like that, but uh, he gave me a blessing and then he said, you're not going to always feel the spirit because of your choices, mm -hmm. but when you do, take heed. So I thought, okay, I better start paying attention to when I feel the spirit. I felt it all the time. I was just going to ask you, like, <laughs> I don't know where he's coming from when he says that, but I don't know if it rings true. It so, didn't ring yeah. true, and I blogged several specific experiences, mm -hmm. you know, I'd say feeling the spirit number two <laughs> or something, yeah. or the bishop project number four, mm -hmm. but um, I stopped doing it after a while because um, I didn't feel a lack of, of the spirit. Mm -hmm. I could hear him talking to me still. I know that sounds crazy, but I, I still hear him saying things to me. I felt direction from mm -hmm. him, um, and I felt the spirit. Yeah. So. And even um, a few months later at uh, Tithing Settlement, the bishop was giving a spiel about the heart, you know, how the Lord looks on the heart. And he asked, what's my, the condition of my heart? And I said, if, I'm <coughs> if the Lord is going to judge me on my heart, then I'm fine. And I think he was really surprised by that. Yeah, yeah. And he said, well, the, the Lord wants to bless you. And I said, actually, he does bless me. Yeah. I feel his blessings all the time. I'm sure there are other blessings he's not blessing me with. I can't go to the temple. I can't take mm -hmm. the sacrament. Mm -hmm. I can't hold a calling, but he's still blessing me. Yeah. That hasn't gone away. Mm -hmm. So it's been a whole new experience for me. Not, wow. I fully expected all those things. Mm -hmm. Loss of the spirit, a loss of blessings, uh, feeling awful inside, yeah. and they just didn't come. Yeah.